Hi, Alan Stratton from As What Turns. As I film this, we're in the middle of the voting process from the Ornament Challenge of 2023. So please get your votes in before Sunday night uh, of, the, of December 10th. So please vote. Vote for five different ones. My fingers are different. And those of your favorites to give us a good idea of what you really like out there. There's some great stuff. The best, in the I think, in the world. The most biggest range of creativity. If you watch it, you will be inspired. If you, if you aren't inspired, I don't know what to say about you. In any case. So, please vote. So, meanwhile, it's time to make an ornament. In this case, I'm picking up from a piece of scrap from a previous not-so-good ornament that was bouncing around my shop. That's this piece of laminated and dyed birch plywood that's here in the bottom. Not commercially available anymore from that brand, but it is from others. And I supplemented it with some other wood and a spindle to try and make sort of a dancing figure. Uh, it's my first attempt at this sort of off-center spindle. Well, it's time to always expand your horizon. So let's turn this. I'm going to call it a dancer with a big flare skirt. So let's turn it. This wood is a couple of segmented rings of laminated and dyed birch from a previous failed project when the outside got smaller than the inside. Yet it was too pretty to throw away. I do hope that I can salvage it. I've mounted to a chuck with short bumpers, a mini cold jaw setup. The interior was finished in the previous project. However, the edge is sharp where the wood got too thin. The task now is to square it off and then finish the exterior. My skew does a good job scraping the thin edge to square it off. I apply shellac finish friction polish to the portion above the chuck nubs. Now to try to finish the remainder where the chuck nubs were in the way. I decide to use a jam chuck. I grab one of my threaded face plates and cut it back to fit the inside of the segmented ring. Success! I'm able to sand and apply shellac here also. I plan to mount the segmented piece to a spindle. However, the hole is a bit larger than I would like. It would mean a very large block of spindle wood, but mostly turned away. Instead, I will turn a walnut section to fill the gap and look like it belongs. The walnut is mounted to a faceplate with double stick tape, while I drill a hole more appropriate for the central spindle. Then shape what will be the underside. This needs to have a tenon to fit the segmented piece, and sand and apply shellac now. That tenon will do double duty. For now, it is useful to hold the wood. Later, it will be part of the assembly. Now, I am in a pickle. This little piece of walnut is not yet finished on the upper convex side. How to hold it? So, I adapt a faceplate to receive the convex curve and another to receive the concave curve. Between the two faceplates, I can get in enough with sandpaper and finish. Phew, that was close. Now for the easy part, the spindle. Or is it? First, rough the spindle and fit the bottom half to the walnut. This is the easy part. My skew does this work nicely. After vacillating between a bell with a handle, or a hoop with a simple spindle, I decide to fashion sort of a dancer with a long hoop skirt. Not bad, eh? Well, this will be an eccentric project that I've seen other, others do. But 
This is my first time with this. By manipulating the axes, I can shape the head, bust, and legs. First, on the main axis, I shape the figure from the waist up. After shifting the axis about an eighth of an inch, I shave off just a little. Then shift the other way and shave off a little more. Then sand at low speed to take off any edges that have developed. The legs are way too thick. Back at the main axis, reduce the diameter from the thigh down. But just in case, I had better apply finish now before anything is parted off. Focusing on the lower legs, shift the axis 90 degrees from the previous shift and on the live center end. After shaving a little bit, shift the opposite direction, then some sanding and shellac. I slide the spindle into the long nose jaws so that I can access the head portion. I have to finish the very bottom of the foot by hand. All that is left is to add a hanger and assemble my dancer with a hoop skirt. After all that time in my shop with the skirt portion begging me to do something with it, it is now part of a dancer that can hang on a tree or practically anywhere else. She's a bit of an experiment but spins very nicely. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my website as well as on YouTube. Please spread your, the word by telling your friends about my weekly videos. I also appreciate your comments and questions. Please wear your full face shield whenever the lathe is running. Are you wearing yours?